I started working towards Healing Fields Foundation in 1998-1999, but officially we started off registered as a society in 2000. I have always been uh, attracted to the poor, to the, um, to the community. There was a time in 1994 we moved to the US, to the US, to America, and I was working as an occupational therapist there. But every time I would, every day I would come back to come back from uh, work, it was like I was just not satisfied. I was extremely unhappy, saying that is this what God has made me, uh, put me on this earth? And somehow I felt this was one of the richest nations of the world, the world, and they can buy any amount of highly skilled care for their population. I have grown up, I have been born in India for a purpose. And I have been educated in India for a purpose. And India as a country with 70% of our population being poor and in the rural areas, even if they could afford to pay, do not have skilled healthcare professionals. And every day I would question myself, what am I doing in this country? It would give me lots of money, it would make my pockets happy, but it could never make my soul happy. And somehow I felt that I had to come back to India. So my husband and me took the decision to come back to India in 1995. And then I did my master's in healthcare management. And as part of the healthcare management program when I was doing my master's, I used to go to the villages to understand what is it that the poor needed to understand what is it that the people in the rural and tribal areas needed, especially the women. And uh, I always thought that uh, healthcare is the foundation of everything else. If your health is okay, then you can have an education. If you had an education, then you can have an increase in your income. And if there's an increase in income, then people can get out of poverty. And this is a cycle. So we, I said that we need to do something at the first stage itself. So I started working with women. I started uh, talking to women, meeting a lot of women from rural and tribal areas to understand what their health needs were, how do they meet their health needs. And one of the uh, answers that I found was that the poor are willing to pay for healthcare, however small it is, provided we can assure them that they can be assured of quality healthcare in proper hospitals and get the treatment that they required. And so we looked at different options and we came up with a health financing program. And it was just not only a health financing in terms of a health insurance product, but also the services around the product. Because however educated you are, or how much of a money you have when you're sick. When you go into the hospital, you're a little scared because you don't know what the doctor is going to tell you. And when there, it's a poor woman who is illiterate and when she goes into the hospital, there are a whole lot of barriers. So we said we need to break these barriers, make it accessible to the woman to be able to get uh, to the hospital, hospital, to get to the right doctor, to get to the right treatment that she requires. And that's how we came up with a complete holistic program which address the product needs, which address their wage compensation because when a person gets admitted in a hospital, it's a woman who suffers because a woman will have to let go of her daily income, has to stay in the hospital to take care of the husband or the children. And so we put in a wage compensation. We also put in um, uh, after hospital medication and stuff like that. So it was a very unique product that we developed and we also got a trained facilitator, we trained women to be in the hospital so that whoever came with our ID card could be taken through the process of hospitalization. And for that, I was given an Ashoka Fellow and the Ashoka, Ashoka is a worldwide organization based in Washington DC, started about 25 to 27 years ago. They search, identify, search and identify social entrepreneurs across the world and support them, put them through a rigorous, uh, uh, rigorous uh, search process and interview process and then support the idea, system changing idea and the person for two years 
so that they would be able to dedicate their life to be able to develop the idea. So Ashoka gave me the Ashoka Fellow for the health financing holistic program that I had developed and implemented. Many a times, many a times, there have been times when um, I have sat and cried. There have been times I've just walked out of the office saying that I'm done. I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. There have been times that I've had conversation with my Lord saying that, why have you put me in this situation? Now that you've brought me in here, it's your responsibility to take me out of this situation. And there have been times when I have cried out and said, that's the end of it. But um, every time I do that, immediately I see that there's a way forward. Um, there was a time in about six years ago when I said I've had it because there was a huge resource crunch in time. So in terms of funding, I had to downsize. And personally also, I was going through a lot of um, uh, economic crisis. So I said, Lord, you've brought me here. I have children who are in school. I need to be able to support them. I have a staff whom I have to support. And I have these poor women whom I believe that you, you have brought me to this space to help them. And you put me in a situation where I can neither go forward nor go backwards. What is it that you want to do? So I remember this. Um, I had gone in to do a field visit to one of the most poorest states of the country, Bihar. And at that point in time, this particular area was completely Naxal infested. That is, extremist militants were uh, being there. So there was nothing, every, nobody wanted to go in there. And that's the place that we went in to do a field visit. Then I come back from the field visit to Varanasi, which is supposed to be the oldest temple town in history. Okay, so the headquarters of my partner organization was in Varanasi. I'm sitting in this hotel room and that morning I have to go and do the presentation and uh, I'm at an extreme low because here I have been praying to God saying I'm going through so much of crisis in my personal life, in my professional life and now you bring me here and take me to this remotest places which is completely Naxal infested where the um, uh, even uh, the school and the primary health centers have blown up by militants, by bombs one week before I had gone there. You take me in there, you show me the poverty and you're not giving me a way forward. And uh, next day morning, I just open up my Bible, I read and I'm sitting there praying, God, I don't know what you brought me here for. I have asked you, I want to leave. I want to quit. I'm done with this work. I want to get to the corporate world where I can make my money. Okay, and support my family. And here you brought me here. And there is no way that I can go back. What are you trying to do? And that was the first time ever I felt I was deep in meditation and praying after I've done my morning daily versus reading. And I see Jesus put his cloak around me and give me the security and say, this is the place where Jesus is sitting with the children. If you remember the way that it is depicted with the kids around and the cloak around. So I feel the cloak around me saying that I'm here to protect you.